Hi guys, in this video I'll be working through the following question. The sports car is travelling along a 30 degree banked road having a radius of curvature of 150 metres. If the car does not change height, that's in the, um, in the vertical direction here, and the coefficient of static friction between the tyres and the road is mu s equal to 0 0.2, determine the maximum safe speed so no slipping occurs. So that's quite low for mu s, but uh, usually this is around about 0.8, but this will do for this question for now. Um, so we're going to be uh, looking at a situation where we've neglected the size of the car, uh, meaning we won't look at the case where the car tips, we'll just look at the case where the car will slide. Now, firstly, when the car is going at its maximum speed, there will be a tendency for the car to move towards uh, this direction here. So we have an impending motion up the slope. In addition to this, um, we also have, that means a, a friction force acting on that system. Um, at the moment where we are about to see a maximum uh, speed, so we will have a friction at the base um, here across the tires that we could call this F. We will have a normal force which acts at right angles to the surface here. Uh, we will also have a weight force which acts on the car going directly down. This will be equal to the mass times the gravity of the car. Um, so the situation that we have here for that car is um, it's moving around some kind of circular track. So I'll just move my way up. So we have some kind of circular track that that car is uh, moving around. We have a normal direction pointing inwards. Um, we have a tangential direction pointing along the direction of the path. So this normal direction we can draw here, pointing in towards the center of, um, of our rotation of that car. Uh, we can draw upwards here our B direction. Um, and then we can have a look at what's happening in terms of accelerations for this vehicle. Now, any car which is going around a curved path will have an acceleration towards its center and the value of that acceleration will be a n, um, the normal acceleration, equal to the velocity of the vehicle at that moment in time, so v squared, divided by rho, which is the radius of curvature of the path of that motion. In the b direction, uh, we see that the car does not change its height, so that means that the acceleration in the b direction will be equal to zero as a result of the car not changing its height. Okay, now each one of these forces here, um, F and N, can be broken up into components of forces. Um, so we see that the, the force F here can be broken up into a component in the X direction. Um, so this will become uh, F times cosine of 30 degrees and uh, the y component of that friction force would be F times sine of 30 degrees. This normal force can be broken up into two parts as well. So the normal force has a, a component in the normal direction so this will become n times sine of 30 degrees and then this component here that will become n times cosine of 30 degrees. Alright, so we'll refer back to this when we look at the next part here. Now from Newton's second law uh, we have that the sum of forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration for that body. So we can have a look now at Newton's second law for each of these um, directions. Alright, so in the, uh, in the B direction we have the summation of forces in the B direction 
equal to the mass times the acceleration in the b direction and we saw that that was equal to zero. So here we can write down the summation of our forces. So in the b direction we have our weight force going down. We have our normal force with the component going up, so plus n times cosine uh, 30. And we have a y component here, so that's uh, minus f sine 30. That is all equal to zero. We can rearrange this and we get the normal force times cosine 30 minus the friction force times sine 30 all equal to the mass times the gravitational pull. So that's 9.81 for that body. In the normal direction here we have an acceleration. So that acceleration was given by v squared over rho. So we have the summation of forces in the normal direction equal to mass times acceleration in the normal direction. Okay. So for that section then, uh, we have summation of forces in the normal direction equal to mass times acceleration in the normal direction. That means we can look at the forces in the normal direction. So um, we have F cosine 30 going towards the left. And we have N sine 30 going towards the left as well, so that's positive. And that is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car in the normal direction, and that's An. Uh, we could replace that with v squared over rho if we wanted to, but I'll, I'll do that maybe at another time here. Alright, so uh, this is equation number one, and this is equation number two. Uh, thirdly, we also know that um, when the car is at its maximum speed, so just remember that back up here we're trying to find out the maximum speed when no slipping occurs. Um, so at the maximum speed our friction force is equal to the maximum friction that we can get from that system. So that will be um, F equal to mu times N for that system, and mu S we mean. So here we can write uh, friction equal to uh, mu times n and that's mu s. So then for this body we can write uh, f equal to 0 0.2 times the normal force. We can call that equation number 3. Okay. So now that we have three equations, we can try to solve. So uh, if we substitute equation three into equation one, uh, we will get the following here. So we can take equation three into equation number one. So we can write n times cosine 30 minus uh, 0 0.2 n, so we've replaced f with 0.2 n, uh, times sine 30 equal to m times g. So g was uh, 9.81. We can take equation 3 and put it into equation 2. And for this we get uh, f, which was 0.2 n, times cosine 30 plus n times sine 30 equal to m times a n for that section now. Uh, next thing we can do now is maybe if we call this equation number 4 and equation number 5 um, we can uh, rearrange equation 4 and equation 5 to make n the subject for both. So for equation 4, we can continue to work with equation 4 and we get uh, n times cosine 30 minus 0 0.2 sine 30 equal to m 
times 9.81. So we end up with uh, n equal to uh, cosine, uh, sorry, equal to m times 9.81 divided by cosine of 30 minus 0 0.2 sine of 30. We can do the same for equation number 5. So for equation number 5, we can factorize the normal force as well. Um, so we can call this, say, 4b. It's equation 4, but just rearranged. Equation 5, we get here uh, n times 0 0.2 cosine 30 plus sine 30 equal to m times a n and we can rearrange for n again so n equal to uh, m a n all divided by 0 0.2 cosine 30 plus sine 30. So we can equate these two equations now um, so 4b and 5b um, and we'll be able to solve for the value of a n for that uh, component. Okay, so uh, we get um, equation 5b, which was uh, m a n divided by 0 0.2 cosine 30 plus sine 30 equal to m times uh, 9.81 divided by cos 30 minus 0 0.2 sine 30. And the value of m for each of these can cancel. So we're assuming that m is not equal to zero, of course. And then we can rearrange the value of, uh, rearrange this equation here. And um, if we rearrange that, we'll get an equation for a n. So bringing this term over to the other side, and we'll get an answer for a n um, for this uh, system here. Um, so 